Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to Aircraft Structures course, Aircraft Structures 1. This is Professor Anup Ghosh from um, Aerospace Engineering IIT Kharagpur. We are <coughs> in the fourth week lecture series and uh, that is why the module 4 and the lecture in sequence is 21. We will get introduced to the method Rayleigh Ridge method. Rayleigh Ridge method is uh, really very, very important. Uh, it is uh, difficult to say how important it is. Uh, it is important because uh, probably this lays down uh, the process of approximate analysis and as a whole it lays down the process of uh, computer based numerical methods. So, as such you will not find any link to those methods more most popularly known as uh, in structural or solid mechanics as finite element method. But uh, it has correlations it will you will get introduced to it uh, slowly as far as I can I will try to give you those glimpses. At this stage it is difficult to discuss those things, uh, uh, but I will try my best to give you those introduction. So, with that idea we will, uh, we will try to cover the Rayleigh Ridge method with one small example. So, let us proceed with uh, the next slide which is as usual a recapitulation slide. In this recapitulation slide what we see is that we have already covered aircraft and aerospace structures analysis history of those. Uh, we have covered various types of external loads, conceptual structural details. We have covered the flight envelope and load factor, how the flight does the flight envelope, lo envelope looks like and uh, why it is so and uh, how the load factor varies. We have seen with examples uh, shear and moment uh, coming to wing and fuselage uh, considering a typical example. We have seen truss and uh, truss in the sense uh, it comes always plain truss, but uh, we have seen also space truss or space structures and uh, we have solved a few examples related to that especially the landing gear problems and then we got introduced to energy methods. And in that sequence we have already done a dummy load or unit load method and unit load method and casting Lianos theorem. Today we will do the Rayleigh Ridge method. So, in the Rayleigh Ridge method uh, it is uh, better to understand that uh, it is an approximate method first. Keeping in mind that idea uh, let us try to understand uh, it is it is a very brief way explained it is explained or discussed uh, as brief as it can be because it is getting introduced for the first time. There are big books uh, on these methods to do as we have already discussed that uh, these and some other methods like the variational principle along with this method uh, lays down the probably the first, uh, first step for the numerical analysis procedure uh, in terms of say um, structural analysis or solid mechanics problems or for fluid mechanics problems or for any other numerical analysis depending on the magnetism or other physics problems. So, uh, let us see try to in understand uh, each and every word of what is said here. So, the method approximates the continuum 
it is a continuous uh, system where continuity of all the variables what, what we are considering that is persisting by a system with a finite number of degrees of freedom. This says a lot as I said. So, in we will discuss always in purview of, of solid mechanics structural analysis. So, what we are considering that a structure which is as such has having a continuity or it is a continuum is broken down to finite number of degrees of freedom. In, in our uh, solid mechanics, we consider the degrees of freedom as displacements and uh, in general we need to define those displacements as functions and we need to carry out those. So, so that, uh, that is the first step, it says that it is an approximate method because it is getting divided in finite numbers of degrees of freedom, it is not a continuous uh, one. Thus, the solution of the differential equations of equilibrium are approximated by a system of simultaneous algebraic equations. So, that is what uh, as I was discussing, uh, this, these degrees of freedom, there may be many or may be repetition for considering small parts. But though it is repetition for different boundary conditions, it will give different values and definitely it will be it will be easier to get uh, simultaneous algebraic equations and uh, we need to solve those simultaneous algebraic equations to find out uh, the approximate solution the method is particularly useful for statically indeterminate problems in which an exact solution is often intractable so it is it is uh, specially uh, means it, it can it has a capability of solving indeterminate problem because the uh, solution approach does not uh, take care of whether it is it is a determinate or indeterminate problem in in bigger sense you, uh, while you will be using this <coughs> you will find that the um, all the problems what in general we solve for practical purpose those are indeterminate problem statically indeterminate problem. So, from the principle of minimum potential energy functional the equilibrium is given by this capital pi shows that the total uh, potential energy and uh, it also says that a variation of it or a small change if I do not talk about in mathematical terms in physical terms if we talk about see by some means if we consider a small change of the functional here the total potential energy. So, that uh, remains uh, that leads to a value of 0 and that that is the fundamental equation and we, we need as we have already introduced finite number of degrees of freedom and it will lead to simultaneous equation. This equation will lead to these simultaneous equations considering uh, depending upon uh, the degrees of freedom we choose and how do we choose. The problem remains how the degrees of freedom describes the problem properly and uh, that is the way we get the solution. We will consider this in this lecture and also in, in the lecture followed by this two problems one in this lecture other one in the followed problem you will find depending upon the assumption of the degrees of freedom on variable description it depends the accuracy though for there are limitations for hand calculations. So, we will find uh, approximate solutions or if pi is a function of n generalized displacements q y as I have already mentioned here the degrees of freedom or displacements as it is mentioned, then pi may be expressed as function of q y to q 2 to q n. And then this is nothing but with respect to each and every displacement variable we are considering variation or in mathematical terms we say that it is the partial derivative with respect to that particular uh, displacement and each and every particular uh, partial derivative equation will lead to one equation. So, we will get 
n equations that is what is said simultaneous algebraic equations we will get. And if we solve those n equations, uh, we can find out some approximate solution and uh, we, we get benefited by this. So, uh, let us move forward. Uh, it, is, it is one more definition of the system in a, in a little bit different way. Let us try to see what is that definition. So, a, a general a general linear deformable system can be described by displacement u x y z v x y z and w x y z, which must satisfy the compatibility, equilibrium and boundary conditions. Compatibility, what is compatibility? Probably we are not introduced that way. Compatibility is, is that while we are considering this variable from one segment to the other, uh, it must uh, maintain the relation between these. So, uh, the strain has to be compatible or uh, otherwise uh, it will not show the property of continuum. Equilibrium definitely it has to maintain a equilibrium, uh, equilibrium equations we will we'll do in, in, in the fifth week class. So, compatibility probably is covered in the sixth week class and boundary conditions. In Rayleigh method, definitely boundary condition has to be satisfied. In Rayleigh method, we write the displacements as u a i f summation of i 1 to n. summation of i equals to 1 to n a i a phi x y z g i x y z where the coefficient is b i here the coefficient is c i and we define w. So, actually w which is anyone say, say w is function of x y z. We also define that that is an equation where we have one more coefficient c i and the function and a function h i which is also a function of x y z, where f i g i and h i functions of x y z are assumed a priori. This plays a very, very important role. We need to have an idea uh, what type of function we should assume for f g and h. It depends on the problem this is the key of, of the approximate method. In finite element analysis, this is conforming, I should not say exactly, it is conforming or similar probably to the shape functions of an element. So, like that we need to assume this a priori, priori because we need to know what problem we are going to solve. Is it a displacement problem? It is a stress problem or some other property we are going to solve. So, depending on that we need to consider and not only that uh, what degree of accuracy we want to consider whether it is linear, which is non-linear. Depending on all those things this compatibility equilibrium and boundary will conditions will change and accordingly these functions will change. So, these functions plays uh, these functions play a, a big role in that they must satisfy kinematic or geometric boundary condition, but not necessarily the stress boundary condition. So, it has to satisfy the kinematic boundary condition, and but so it is not always necessary to satisfy the stress boundary condition, uh, but it is sometimes desirable to solve uh, to maintain that a i b i c i are coefficients that we need to find out otherwise uh, the functions. Functions we are saying assuming. So, the unknowns are a i b i c i only. So, we need to find out those. So, what we are considering again variation we are considering of the total potential energy and that gives us three partial differential uh, partial differential segments in these equations which are 
del pi del a i del pi del b i del pi del c i then assuming that a i b i c i are linearly independent variables it concludes that that then the above equation is satisfied if and only if individually these are 0. So, that gives us n equations, n equations and n equations. So, we have 3 n equations, we have 3 n unknowns as we have done and uh, these simultaneous equations, algebraic equations we are supposed to solve and we are supposed to find out. But say for hand calculation it is not possible to solve, that is the reason we will solve small problems probably considering one or two variables, but principally it is the same. So, for a set of linearly independent simultaneous equation that can be solved for a i b i and c i. So, let us move for the example and try to understand how this method has been applied. Example statically determinate problem. This problem uh, is quite known problem. You have you can easily solve this problem using the methods what we have already described. Uh, those are like Castiglianos principle or unit load method, dummy load method, all those things are complementary energy function derivative method. All those things you can easily do. So, uh, the boundary conditions are w 0 equals to 0 and w l is also equals to 0. That means, we are supposed to assume the function w such that at this point it is equals to 0 as well as at this point it is equals to 0. The w x is supposed to be like something like this and it also has to satisfy the moment boundary condition here that is the m 0 is equals to 0 and m l is equals to 0. As we know that uh, uh, double derivative of w with respect to the x as it is said from the center line, sorry, from the center line the e i del 2 w del x square is equals to 0 following this and following this we get that this is that is also equals to 0. So, we need to assume w such that it satisfies all these four boundary conditions, these two as well as this two. So, now we are assuming it, it requires some experience, do not uh, think that uh, it, it may be assumed with two days practice or maybe one year's experience of solving problem. So, the problem is assumed uh, w x sorry the solution or the displacement function is assumed as w x equals to summation of i equals to 1 to n a i sin i pi x by l. Okay. So, um, sin function is quite uh, it matches well let us see how good how a, good is our approximation to the exact solution. It satisfies boundary conditions, the potential energy, total potential energy is pi is equals to u plus v and uh, u what we have already seen this one. So, that has to be its simple derivation is considered here and uh, from 0 to l as usual from 0 to l it is integrated and the square all those things I hope that you will be able to carry out this and finally, we get the strain energy as u is equals to L e i by 4 summation i equals to 1 to n i pi by L whole to the power 4 a i square. Potential energy P e of the external load in the deflected equilibrium is V. So, we need to find out that portion also the portion V of the total potential energy. So, that comes definitely minus of load into displacement that is what is uh, given here P 0 x the uniformly distributed load and the displacement function W x what we have considered. 
So, uh, it is integrated that way, it is uh, written the same way, uh, it is written twice just to avoid confusion and then integration is carried out that gives us that V is equals to minus of 12 by pi P 0 A i by L sum, summed up over 1 to n for i equal value of 1 to n. And then the total potential energy partial derivative with A i is considered. If we consider with respect to A i, this is this portion as well as A i is partial derivative is considered. So, and the previous one if we consider it, a few step jumps are there, uh, you can easily get that I guess. So, summing up of u and v and taking the partial derivative with A i gives us this relation and that is equals to 0 and this gives us that A i is equals to 4 p 0 l to the power 4 divided by pi to the power 5 i to the power 5 E i. And then once we have the value of A i, uh, the a priori assumed displacement function w, w x is equals to 4 p 0 l to the power 4 divided by pi to the power 5 E i summation over i equals to 1 to n and 1 by i to the power 5 sin i pi x by l. The convergence of the above series is rapid, you can easily test it, uh, probably by this time you have uh, acquired some skill of numericals or coding. You can easily do a, a coding to find out how fast it, it get converges, so that you can easily do. But uh, in this uh, work, what we have considered only considered the first term and if we consider the first term, what we have at L by 2 putting the value of x equals to L by 2, we have the deflection uh, or central deflection here as 0 0.0131 P 0 L to the power 4 by E i. And you please note that this is the exact value 0 0.0130, which is nothing but 5 by 384 P0 L to the power 4 by E i. So, with the first term only, it is quite accurate, right. So, with other terms, you can easily check how quickly it converges and uh, how accurately we get the solution. Uh, this point, it is, it is. Uh, good to note that since uh, our a priori assumption of w x y is, uh, is uh, very very close to the actual deflection curve, this curve is a sine curve that is the reason we are able to able to get almost the exact solution with first term only. So, it depends on the assumption of the basic variable what we are considering or um, assuming and uh, that way it depends the, on the solution. So, with this uh, uh, I hope uh, a very, very important method in solid mechanics is introduced, Rayleigh Ridge method. Uh, you may have a look in detail in some from some advanced books, uh, definitely you will get enlightened and you will learn a lot. So, uh, we proceed further with to the standard reference page and from there uh, we come to the conclusion page, the energy methods of structural analysis and uh, the Rayleigh Ridge method we have discussed here. Hope you have understood to some extent for further uh, things you please refer to the advanced books uh, basically for those analysis and thank you for uh, attending this uh, particular lecture, we will proceed further for indeterminate problem solving. Thank you.